Welcome to Mikunst Hardware. I have finally got the chance to test this no-name Chinese motherboard for two Intel LJ2011 version 3 CPUs. The motherboard does not have an official name, but on the motherboard itself you can find the title ZXDU99D4 version 1.11. You can find this motherboard on AliExpress under the names of Atermiter, Machinist or Klisre. The price for this motherboard is less than 100 euros. That's why it attracts many different potential buyers who are asking me if this motherboard is any good, if quality is ok and so on. Well, in this video I'm going to try to answer these questions. First, let's take a look at the motherboard itself, I will tell you everything I could figure out about the motherboard, after that I will switch to my below slides and take a look at the test results. Let's start with the memory specification. Even though this motherboard has 4 memory slots for each CPU, it unfortunately has only 2 memory channels per CPU. The orange memory slots are the primary slots and the black ones are the secondary slots. This if you are using only 2 memory sticks per CPU, you have to install them exactly into the orange slots because the black ones are secondary slots for the same memory channels and the motherboard is not going to work in this configuration. Just a reminder, Tinsha X99 Dual, Huanan GX99 FAD and Huanan GX99 TAD, all of these motherboards are also from China and they have 4 memory channels per CPU. On this motherboard you will get only 4 memory channels, 2 memory channels per CPU. Ok, on the motherboard itself we will find two PCI Express X1 connectors. These connectors are connected to the motherboard chipset itself, this means that the speed is limited to PCI Express 2.0 and this also means that you can use these two connectors even if you are using just one CPU. These two slots are PCI Express 3.0 x16 and they are connected to the first CPU. This means that you can use both of these slots even if you are using just one CPU installed. This M.2 connector is connected to the motherboard chipset. This means that it's unfortunately limited to PCI Express 2.0 x4. The other M.2 slot is connected to the first CPU. Thus you can use the full speed PCI Express 3.0 x4. There is also a bunch of switches over here or jumpers which you can switch and then this slot turns into SATA mode and you can install SATA M.2 SSDs. This is a small disappointment, even though I like a feature to be able to install SATA SSDs, I would prefer this slot which is limited to PCI Express 2.0 to be switchable between PCI Express and SATA SSD drives. This one, which is PCI Express 3.0, I would keep for the fast PCI Express SSD drives. On this side of the motherboard we will find 6 SATA 3 ports, front USB 3.0 and 2.0 connectors, front buttons and LEDs, COM port, BIOS chip and clear CMOS jumper. Audio connector is located over here, the location is not the best, but it's ok. For the fans we have two 3-pin connectors over here and two 4-pin connectors over here. Now let's take a look at the VRM or CPU power system on this motherboard. After I will go to my slides I will show you the detailed names of the MOSFETs used on this motherboard, but I can tell you that the power system is exactly the same as on Huan Andre X99 f 8 d motherboard which I have tested. Unlike Huanan G motherboard which has some screws to connect the heatsink, Klisre X99 Dual using these kind of clips, these are plastic clips, but as you can see with the thermal pad every MOSFET is covered and it has contact with the thermal pad, which is a good indicator and there shall be no thermal issues on this motherboard at least with some reasonable CPUs. Now let's take a look at the back side of the motherboard. Here we will find all the standard package for Chinese X99 motherboard. This is very basic 5.1 audio, gigabit Ethernet, 4 USB 3 ports, 4 USB 2 ports and 2 PS2 ports. Motherboard and CPU power connectors are located on this side and I would say that the location of these connectors is rather convenient. On Huanan G motherboard this connector is turned upside down and those capacitors are interfering with this clip. It's also important to mention that this X99 dual motherboard can work with just one 8-pin power connector. I have tested the motherboard connecting just this 8-pin power and this 24-pin power. So, without this 8-pin power the motherboard is working well and both of the CPUs are working as well. A few extra technical details about ZX DU99 D4. The motherboard uses Intel C612 chipset, Gigabit Ethernet is provided by Realtek RTL8111H, audio chip is also provided by Realtek ALC662. 
VRM or CPU power delivery system consists of six pairs of QN3107 plus QN3103. Each CPU has its own power delivery system. Heat sink on top of the MOSFETs weighs 34 grams. The motherboard has size of 285 by 295 mm or extended ATX. It's slightly bigger than the standard ATX form factor. Now let's move on to the test results. Every port and slot on the motherboard is working well. I have tested everything including PCI Express X1 slots. To make USB 3.0 ports work properly, you have to manually install a driver. This is the driver that I have received from the Huanan G manufacturer for Huanan G X99 FAD motherboard. It also works on this Klisre X99 motherboard. Without this driver trying to run Crystal Disk Mark benchmark, system was hunting every now and then, and overall time to complete the benchmark was 8 to 9 minutes. After installing the drivers, system was responsive during the entire test, and the benchmark was completed in 4 to 5 minutes. As any other Chinese X99 and X79 motherboard, Klisre X99 Dual is not able to adjust 3-pin fan speed. Only 4-pin fans can be adjusted, the 3-pin fans are working at 100% rotation speed. Feature-wise, this motherboard is also not that bad. BIOS chip on the motherboard is W25Q128BV, which is a standard for these Chinese X99 motherboards. It's not locked, thus you can use flash programming tool or FPT to write modified BIOS, to perform turbo boost unlock or to try some other BIOSes. Unfortunately, sleep mode is not supported by this motherboard. The other disappointment is that restore on AC power loss function is missing in the BIOS. Other than that, booting from NVMe drive works, RAM timings are available in the BIOS, Ubuntu 2004 works as well, VRM thermals are not bad at all. After one hour of ADA64 stress test with the two Xeon E5 2678V3s, maximum temperature I was able to register with my external thermometer was about 75 degrees Celsius. For the extra notes I can say that the motherboard takes very long time to boot and CPU Z lies about RAM channels and RAM timings configuration. It seems like this is one more Chinese X99 motherboard where manufacturers agrees with the CPU Z developers to provide misleading information. For example, if you install 4 memory modules per CPU, CPU Z will indicate that each CPU has 4 memory channels, which is a lie. CPU Z also shows very low and incorrect RAM timings, usually it stays at CL10 regardless of the real values. With the dual Xeon E5 2678V3, I have tested a bunch of different memory configurations. Unfortunately, as any other Chinese X99 motherboard, ZXDU99D4 does not work with the cheap 4 banks 4GB memory modules. All other memory configuration I have tested on this motherboard worked well. This includes serial registered ECC memory as well as regular desktop memory from Corsair. Maximum RAM capacity I was able to test was 160GB, 4 sticks 16GB each and 3 sticks 32GB each. Thus, I can safely assume that this motherboard can support at least up to 256GB of memory. Intel Turbo Boost technology works on this motherboard, but you have to go to the BIOS and manually enable CPU C6 state. With this feature disabled, CPUs will not be turbo boosting to their maximum frequency even if one or two CPU cores are utilized. When it comes to the turbo boost unlock, FFS drivers do not work. It's really pity, but so far I was not able to get FFS driver to work properly on any of the dual socket motherboards. With Klisre X99 Dual or ZXDU99D4, EFI drivers from developers called MOV or Payne didn't work either. Those drivers worked well to increase turbo boost frequency for just one CPU. In order to force both of the CPUs to turbo boost to the maximum turbo frequency, I had to use V3X4 EFI drivers. These drivers can be downloaded from their official GitHub page, link will be available in the video description. Apart of dual Xeon E5 2678V3 setup, I have also tested one E5 2620V4. Unfortunately, I have only one V4 CPU, thus I cannot confirm that this motherboard would work with a pair of such CPUs. I have also tested server registered ECC memory, as well as regular desktop memory with this V4 CPU. Both configurations were working fine. To get maximum turbo boost speed, you also need to go to the BIOS and manually enable CPU C6 state. Other than that, I didn't get any complaints and any issues. 
E5-2620V4 worked well on ZXDU99 D4. I guess collecting this much information about ZXDU99 D4, I can make a conclusion regarding this motherboard. Right now you can buy it from AliExpress for about 80 euros, and this is obviously a big plus for this motherboard. Other than that, we can say that dual CPU support, 256 gigs of RAM, it also looks nice, it has two full PCI Express X16 3.0 slots, as well as two M.2 slots. Even though one of the slots is PCI Express 2.0, it's still nice to have two of them instead of just one. The motherboard also has RAM timings configuration in the stock BIOS, and the build quality is kinda okay. The motherboard also has its cons. The first one and the obvious one is only two memory channels per CPU. The other ones are the standard list for the Chinese X99 motherboards. FFS drivers do not work as this is a dual socket motherboard, restore on AC power loss feature is missing in the BIOS, it's not possible to adjust and monitor 3-pin fans. If I would have to be a little bit nitpicking, then I would say that CPU socket and RAM slots are located very close to each other. Thus, if you plan to buy this motherboard, make sure that you have CPU coolers which have direct attachment onto the CPU socket without any intermediate brackets. The black brackets which are usually common with the Chinese X99 and X79 motherboards in order to be able to install clip-on CPU coolers are physically not fitting together onto this motherboard. You can install one, but not two of them. Even if you manage to install both of them, the clips on the CPU cooler may interfere with the memory sticks, and you might not be able to install all four memory modules onto the motherboard. Overall, my score for this motherboard would be 7 out of 10, but only because it costs this little. 80 euros is a very good price for this dual socket motherboard. For my previous videos where I was comparing Xeon i5-2678v3 with the Ryzen 5 3600 and other CPUs, I have got quite a few comments where people were complaining about my comparison, calling it unfair. Some people believe that I have to compare dual socket configuration with the two Xeon i5-2678v3 against one Ryzen 5 3600 in games. They claim that since two Xeon i5-2678 can be bought for the same price as one Ryzen 5 3600, I have to make dual socket CPU comparison against one Ryzen 5 3600. The reality though is slightly different. Even modern games can utilize up to 12 CPU cores. With a dual socket CPU configuration you're getting 24 CPU cores and increased memory latency. This is just how it works. If CPU 1 wants to read or write some data into a memory module which is installed for the CPU 2, it has to go through the CPU 2. This increases the memory latency, which decreases gaming performance. Thus, dual setup of Xeon i5-2678 will deliver worse gaming performance than just a single CPU. If you're planning to build a gaming computer, please do not buy dual socket motherboards. These motherboards are designed for workstations only. If you plan to build such a workstation or a server, then I can suggest you to take a look at some alternatives. For example, Jinsha X99 Dual, Huanan X99 FAD, Huanan X99 TAD. In the video description you will find a link to an AliExpress shop where you can buy ZXDU99 D4 motherboard or Klisre X99 Dual. You will also find a link to a Geekbench 5 result which was taken on this Klisre X99 dual motherboard under Linux Ubuntu 2004. For now though, that's all I have for you. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, goodbye.